goodwill of 23 disappears. The other asset we're going to write off is the intangible assets, because the question says so, and that means we write off 27. It's full goodwill, so we are splitting the retained earnings and the NCI. So we are taking 56% and 44%. So we're taking 44%, which is 22, and the retained earnings are 28. So the goodwill disappears, the intangible asset goes down, and we've got a post to work in five, and we've got a post to work in four. It does get a little bit messy in the end. I am now three minutes over my budget. Yeah? I'm now three minutes over my budget. We're, we should be taking a break at quarter past. It's now 18 minutes past, so I must have spent a couple more minutes on this. But that's okay. Back I go, back I go, back I go. In my retained earnings, in my retained earnings, I have an impairment loss of 28. So um, this is the impairment loss in respect to the second sub of Heaney. And this is 28. Um, if you want that impairment loss calculated, that's 56% of 50. Yeah. And that comes from, effectively, note number three. Yeah, now in terms of my NCI, I need to find my NCI. And in my NCI working, reference it to note number three. There is an impairment loss, and the share of that impairment loss that you're charging is 44% of 50. And 44% of 50 is 22. 44% of 50 is 22. Exam questions are time pressured. Exam questions, though, have to be broken down into parts. Yeah? And uh, what, you, what, what you've got to try and do is to keep moving. One of the great things about group accounts is that there are pro formas on control to control, there are pro formas on goodwill, on disposals, on exchange differences, on associates, and you must know those pro formas so that when you're doing an impairment loss or when you're doing goodwill, you're not saying, oh, well, how do I work it out? You know the format, and then you're looking for the numbers to slot into the format so life is easier for you. I want to finish the question. I want to finish the question. But before we take a break, and when we come back, we'll finish the question. In terms of what's happened here, in terms of what we've done already, are there any questions? Yeah? So our kind of budget, our working budget, we spent 35 minutes. Yeah, I've used up 35 minutes. I was hoping for 30. I was budgeting on 30, but it's actually turned out to be 35. So when we come back, we've got a 10-minute story where we can put the balance sheet together, yeah, as best we can, and then we will together tackle some of the other areas of the question. But are there any issues relating to this question so far? Good. Excellent. Well, let's have a look at the time. And the time is, uh, yeah, 20 past, 25 past, slightly late, but uh, you are being very patient with me. So let's take a break at the stage. When we come back from the break, we'll be carrying on with this past examination question. Now, why does intangible assets ring a bell with me? I think the reason it rings a bell with me is because that stupid, complicated, impairment review process and the upshot of that stupid complicated impairment review process was that we not only wrote off all of the goodwill but there was an additional balance that we were writing off for 27. You know, very, 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 very few students would have got that. You know, it's not, it's not a pass or fail issue. Um, 
but we have picked it up, and we have picked it up from note number three. We have picked it up from note number three, and we have an impairment loss there of 27. We have an impairment loss there of 27. Finally, there are current assets. Current assets are 895, current assets are 480, and current assets are 250. So that deals with our asset situation. That deals with our asset situation so far as I am concerned. We can come back, tidy it up a little bit later in a minute, but here I am on yeah, looking at the bottom half, and the share capital is the parent company only, which is 920. Other components of equity will be working six. Retained earnings will be working five. NCI will be working for, leave a space, leave a space, leave a space, give it some respect, equity is different from debt, so non-current liabilities are 495 plus 123 plus 93, current liabilities are 408 plus 128 plus 138. If any of these companies had been a foreign subsidiary, I would of course be translating at the closing rate on the face of the balance sheet. I'm pausing, I've done my uh, 45 minutes, I've earned my 25 marks. At this moment in time, if this is what I hand in, I get 25 out of 25, even though it's not added up. Can I talk you through the marking guide now that we've done the question? It might make a little bit more sense. PPE is worth five marks. We have got five out of five. Because what we have done with PPE is we have what we have done with PPE is we have correctly yeah, taken parent plus sub plus sub, we've got the correct number, we've got the correct number, and we've referenced it. So we've got five out of five for PPE. Goodwill, we have got five out of five for calculating goodwill and for processing the impairment reviews on that goodwill. We've got five out of five. The intangible asset story, that's not what we're looking at here. Yeah, we haven't earned the intangible asset mark, the uh, impairment, uh, because we've got a separate story on impairment. So that number is to come. So we have not yet got that mark. We have not yet got that mark. We've got our mark for current assets. What we haven't got <coughs> is the disposal mark. So we've added together, we've got our current asset mark sorted out. Retained earnings are worth six. We've got six out of six. Other components of equity is worth four. We've got four out of four. Let me show you other components of equity. Let me remind you what have we got going on in other components of equity. There we are. In other components of equity, yeah, in other components of equity, this was worth four marks. Literally, yeah, one mark for writing share of post acquisition profit percentage times a number, another mark if coincidentally you happen to get the answer right. So that's worth two marks, that's worth two marks, that's just an opening balance. Yeah? Retained earnings, how much are retained earnings worth? Uh, retained earnings were worth a little bit more than that, weren't they? Retained earnings were worth help. Keep going backwards and forwards, it's probably a bit annoying. Uh, retained earnings are worth something like six marks. Yeah? Oh, oh, retained earnings are worth something like six marks. That's interesting because we've got three numbers in it. And those three numbers are each worth two marks each. So, providing you've had a go 
yeah, you're going to get a mark, and providing you actually get the right number, then you happen to get two marks. So this is how the marking guide works. Markers are given discretion. NCI is worth three marks, which is a bit tight. Current liabilities are worth a mark, so total 35. So the marks I haven't earned are the intangible asset, because we've still got a note about that. The marks we haven't earned about Putin. So when we do Putin, Putin is worth four marks. You wouldn't know that in the exam, because you're not given the marking guide in the question. And the disposal group is worth five marks. So there are 10 marks still yet to earn, which are accounting issues outside net assets, NCI, goodwill, pre-post acquisition, fair value adjustment, so on and so forth. Now, these, this information, this is to do with note number five, uh, this is to do with note number six, and that is to do with note number four. So there are additional pieces of uh, information. So note number four deals with Putin, note number five deals with patents, note number six deals with the disposal group. Let me, let me give you five minutes. What I'd like you to do is to very, very quickly skim read number four, number five, and number six. And make an instant decision which one you like. Don't read number four in great detail, then number five in great detail, and then number six in great detail, because your head will hurt. Make a decision which of these looks to you the easiest to do. Because you don't have to do number four first, then number five second, then number six third. You are in control, you are an adult, you are able to determine the order in which you deal with these things. And I'd like you to deal with one of them. If you happen to choose the intangible one, then have a go at another one as well, because that is only worth a mark. Yeah? So five minutes, a long five minutes, you choose, yeah, you sort something out, yeah, think about the adjustment, try and apply your knowledge. Yeah? Let me give you five minutes. After five minutes, I will deal with both of these or all three of these items and we'll sort of wrap the question up.